Hey, shalom Israel, most high in Christ, bless you all. You know what day it is. That's right. It's Shout Out Tuesday. It is Shout Out Tuesday. Uh, and as you know, before I get to the shout outs, the letter reading, I like to cover a few things and I might go a little in depth today, but please be patient with me. I want to open up with a, a clip regarding the recent turmoil that has happened from city to city and state to state. And what I want you all to understand is that white people have hijacked, I'm going to say it again, white folks have hijacked the protests regarding the death of our brother, George Floyd. Now, George Floyd was not our only brother that has been murdered at the hands of white supremacy. You had Breonna Taylor, you had Ahmaud Aubrey. Um, that's, that's what the three I can remember off the top of my head at this moment. I know there was one more. Y'all can put it down in the comments. But why was George Floyd picked? Is it because he was the only one that died? No, they all died horribly. Even Ahmaud Aubrey uh, died at gunshot on film. Okay. So what happened was white people picked who they wanted to... Uh, protest about. And they use the face of George Floyd. And it's not that white people love you, black man, black woman. I know you're shocked to hear that. They're not marching. They're not protesting because they love you. They're marching and protesting to overthrow the current government that is in place. These are people part of what's called or termed the left wing. And if you saw the Sabbath class, what's, what class was it? Uh, Hatred and murder of black people. I told you there's a group called Antifa, which is a political group of left wingers. And they're all across the country. They're well funded, well connected. Now, I don't know if they're funded by George Soros as Black Lives Matter is. Oh, did I say something right there? Did I say George Soros funds Black Lives Matter? That's right, I did. That is not a black organization. Whoever pays the piper calls the tunes. Remember that. I'm going to say it again. Whoever pays the piper calls the tunes. And George Soros funds Black Lives Matter. Now, I don't know who funds Antifa at this very moment. Some people say it's the Democrats. Some people say it's the Republicans. Regardless, this has been a social experiment. I'm going to say it again. This has been a social experiment and is bent on destroying black people and overthrowing the current government. Watch this. Yeah, yeah, and you can see behind me the last of the people that are being, uh, that have been arrested are now awaiting uh, their transportation to the Hennepin County Jail. And I gotta tell you, I'm not making light of this situation or this week at all, but it has been one incredible study of sociology, psychology, and human behavior especially the way that it ended here tonight. A peaceful protest gets tense. Eventually they close in, there's tear gas and everything else. They arrest people. They were arrested how many hours ago now? Three hours ago? It's hard being black in this country when your life is not valued. Ella Baker said, until the killing of black men, black mother's sons become as important to the rest of the country as the killing of a white mother's son. We who believe in freedom cannot rest until this happens. She said that in 1964. And we're still echoing those same cries today. It was hard to listen to that interview. Um, It's just so much pain. You get so tired. We, we have black children. I have a 15 year old daughter. I mean, what do I tell her? I'm raising a son. I have no idea what to tell him. Now I feel a brother's pain. I got sons and daughter. I feel the pain. It's a heart wrenching interview, but the only thing we can tell our sons and daughters is what God says to tell them. Let's go to Luke chapter 1. I'm going to start at verse 68 and read down to verse 71. 
Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he has visited and redeemed his people. The first thing you need to understand, brothers and sisters, that we are the real children of Israel. Not those transplants, those converts you have in Israel that was set there in 1948 by the League of Nations. Those are not the Israelites the Bible speaks of. The Israelites are a people, a black people that have gone and are currently in captivity. Verse 70, verse 69, I'm sorry. And has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant, David. The horn of salvation is Jesus the Christ, the black Messiah, according to Revelation chapter 1, verse 14 and 15. Jesus Christ, that's right. Jesus Christ is a black man with white wool hair on his head and his face and his feet like fine brass burned in a furnace, describing Christ as a black man, not a white man. Verse 70, as he spake by the mouth of his holy prophets, which have been since the world began. Since the time of Genesis, Christ has been prophesied from the Genesis, okay, chapter three, all the way up. All the prophets from the time of Adam prophesied about coming Messiah, the seed of the woman, okay, which would deliver God's chosen seed, the seed of the nation of Israel, the 12 tribes of Israel, which we are. Verse 71, here's the point, that we should be saved from our enemies. Let's read that part again, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. That gives us comfort. That is to give us hope. That is what our brother Bakari Sellers is unaware of, just as your celebrities don't know, your athletes don't know. They don't know what to tell their sons and daughters. They're putting their boys in dresses and wigs. They are lost. So don't hold your breath waiting on these celebrities. I tell you, don't hold your breath waiting on them. God forbid. It's just... It's hard being black in this country when your life is not valued. And people are worried about the protesters and the looters. And it's just people who are frustrated, who for far too long have not had their voices heard. And so you put me on after his brother and I feel like I lost my brother. And nobody cares about the video. They had a video in a Mont Aubrey and two Different solicitors looked at that video and declined to press charges. And so for those of us who have a mistrust of the system, it's very hard for us to do anything else other than just to cry this morning. You have asked yourself, why was George Floyd picked out of the three recent murders? Because you had George Floyd was the most recent. Prior to that, you had uh, Ahmaud Aubrey. Prior to that, you had Breonna Taylor. Um, why was George Floyd picked? You ever ask yourself that question? Well, George Floyd was picked by white supremacists. Those left-wing groups who, wanted, who want to overthrow the country and use black people to help do it. And then after they vote, if, if, they um, if they ever are successful, which they won't be, if they ever are, what will they do to black people? Finish you off. See, black people, you haven't learned. I'm surprised that you black men, you weak black men have not figured nothing out yet. But there's more that we can do than cry this morning. I'm going to tell you, there's more than we can do than cry this morning. And I ain't talking about marching on the street, holding signs up. I'm a man. Ah, love me. Or going around hugging white folks. I, you need a hug. You simple as hell. You know, there's a story about a man, about a snake that got sick and almost died. And here comes a black woman. She's going to nurse the snake back to health. She feeds it. She keeps it warm. Then when it gets in a bit of health, what does it do? It bites the hell out of her and kills her. And as she lay there dying, she's going to ask the snake why. And he said, B.I., don't you know I'm a snake? She said, but I, I cared for you. I loved you, B. I'm a snake. That's my nature. Now, you black men, you might not understand that, uh, that little fable there, but you've been in this country over 400 years, over 400 years under white supremacy, and you still trying to hug them. You still trying to kiss them and love them. You stupider than an ox and an ass. Isaiah chapter one, verse three. That's where I got that from. 
Um, but there's more that we can do than just cry. I'm going to take us to Leviticus chapter uh, 26. Leviticus chapter 26. Bear with me. Let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. Here we go. Here we go. This is what Moses said to us in the wilderness. Leviticus, this in the wilderness is on the continent of Africa, by the way. Leviticus 26, verse 17. He said, he warned us about the Lord, what he would do. He says, and I will set my face against you, you black men, black women, Latin men, Latin women, because you are the real Israelites. You're the you here in this verse. And I will set my face against you. And ye shall be slain before your enemies, slain like George Floyd, slain like Ahmaud Aubrey, slain like Breonna Taylor. It says, they that hate you shall reign over you. They that hate you shall reign over you. Notice it doesn't say the police only. Because what you like to do is stipulate or point out one group or one organization. Mm -mm. The Bible says they that hate you shall reign and rule over you. That's this entire American system. Okay. And you shall flee when none pursueth you. Now I'm going to jump on over. Let me go on over the same chapter, same chapter. What verse do I want? Uh, I'll start at verse 44. I'm in Leviticus 26. I'm going to read verse 44 and 45. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, are we in America? Yes. Are we in the land of our enemies? Yes. Let's read it again. And yet for all that, when they be in the land of their enemies, I will not cast them away. Neither will I abhor them, meaning hate them, meaning that's us. He won't hate us. Neither will I abhor them to destroy them utterly. He's, God's not going to allow us all to be put to death. It says, and to break my covenant with them, for I am the Lord their God. So he's not going to destroy us and forget his covenant that he made with our forefathers. Watch this. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors. What ancestors? You mean Martin Luther King Jr.? Hell no! You mean Abraham? You mean Martin Luther King, Abraham? Hell no! Malcolm? Hell no! The ancestors the Bible is talking about are the ancestors of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Moses, the prophets. Read the Bible. Open the book and read it. Please do yourself a favor. Verse 45 again. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors, whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt in the sight of the heathen, that I might be their God, I am the Lord. See, you thought that covenant ended with the Old Testament. Oh, how foolish you've been. Didn't we just read that a few minutes ago? Didn't we just read that a few minutes ago in the book of Luke chapter 1? Let's go back. Luke chapter 1, verse 71. Watch this that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. Here we go. To perform the mercy promised to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he, met, which he swore to our father Abraham, that he would grant unto us that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. See, you've never read the Bible. Or if you've heard about the Bible, you, all you've heard about it is white supremacy, that Christian mythology that you got going on every Sunday. Now, what can we do? What can we do? What did Christ say to do? What did Jesus the Christ say to do? Now, this is going to be shocking to some of you right now. To, to those, to you Israelites that hear this, I'm just preaching to the choir because you know what the Bible says. But to my brothers and sisters in Christianity, Islam and all these other false religions out here. Watch what Christ says to do in the midst of trouble. Luke 18, let's start at verse one. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint. Saying, there was in a city a judge which feared not God, neither regarded man. And there was a widow in that city. And she came unto him saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. Avenge me of mine adversary. The word adversary means enemies. And he would not for a while. But afterward, he said within himself, 
Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith. And here's a point of the parable, verse 7. And shall not God avenge his own elect, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, shall he find faith on the earth. Now, why did he ask will he, when he comes, will he find faith on the earth? Because you've been taught in your Christian mythological churches of white supremacy that it is an evil thing to pray for vengeance. You don't believe in praying for vengeance. Although you read it in the book, your white slave masters have taught you never pray for vengeance. After all, vengeance is the Lord. Yes, vengeance is the Lord's and you're supposed to pray for it. Your sons, your daughters, your aunties, your uncles, your grandmas and grandfathers. We are all supposed to pray for vengeance from sun up to sundown. Pray for vengeance and watch the angels work. Watch the Lord send his chariots with the world calls UFO. Watch them come down. Get me all hyping up, upset here. Now, watch this, watch this, because I know what some of you are thinking. Because we just read, we just read in Luke chapter 18 and verse 7, and shall not God avenge his own elect? You're thinking that the elect of God, according to Christianity, is anybody that believes in Jesus. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Let's go to Isaiah 45 and verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's sake, and Israel, mine elect. I have even called thee by thy name. I have surnamed thee, though thou hast not known me. God surnamed us Israel, although we have not known him. What does it mean we have not known him? All you've known in your Christian churches is about some mythological white supremacist white man with blonde hair, blue eyes, and pink red skin who loves you, who claims he loves you. Let me tell you, there's never been a white man in history who gave his life for you. Stop fooling yourselves, black men and black women, and especially some of you Yahya Israelites. You're one of the first ones to jump on the scenes for the white man. Just shut the hell up because you don't know the Bible at all. So let's read that again. Now that we've proven the elect of the Israelites, verse 7, Luke 18, verse 7. And shall not God avenge his own elect? So his own elect of the Israelites, which cried day and night unto him, though he bear long with them. I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. So why have we not been avenged speedily? Because none of you are praying for vengeance. You're not praying for vengeance that has occurred to our brother George Floyd. You're not praying for vengeance for the evil, the murder that happened to our, our brother Ahmaud Aubrey. You're not praying for vengeance against those who murdered our sister Breonna Taylor. So forth and so on. The list goes on and on and on and on. You ain't praying for vengeance, not near one of you. Prove me wrong. Prove me, I'll do a, pray, a prayer in vengeance and, oh, what is he doing? You're not supposed to do this. This is a cult. This is a cult. That's what you do. That's what you do. Rejecting all the while the words of Christ. Okay. Bakari, your father was shot more than 50 years ago. 50 years ago. And we're sitting here this morning and watching it happen again. And so where do you find the hope? How do you tell your son and daughter that it's going to get better? I don't, I don't know. I mean, maybe Dante has the answer. I don't know. I mean, I, I tried to keep hope. I try to keep faith. You know, I hope uh, none of us ever have to sit next to Ben Crump, the lawyer, because that brother has lost almost every case when it comes to um, our people getting murdered in the street. That brother's lost almost every case. So, <laughs> and I ain't hating on him. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. Um, you try to keep faith. Our brother Bakari Sutter said, you try to keep faith. Faith in what? Faith in a system, faith in a land that oppresses you, or faith in white man Jesus? Is that what you're saying keep faith about? Because if any of those that I just mentioned you're having faith in, 
you're, you're in a losing cause, my brother. And all of you that think like him, all of you. Uh, let's go to Luke chapter 13. I want to go to Luke 13. Actually, you know what? Before I go to Luke 13, I want to go to Nehemiah chapter 9. Now, Nehemiah is a hard chapter. A hard, he says something heavy, and I just want y'all to, to, to peep it. It's very cold. It's very heart-wrenching. It's a harsh reality. All right. After Ezra, Nehemiah chapter 9, verse 37. Watch this. It reads, And it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our sins. So the kings that have been set over us have been set over us because of our sins. When you read 1 John 3 verse 4, I was, what is sin? Breaking God's laws. That's what sin is. I know a lot of you Christians never learned that. Let's read it again. Uh, I'm going to start at 36. Behold, we are servants this day. And for the land that thou gavest unto our fathers to eat the fruit thereof and the good thereof, behold, we are servants in it. And it yieldeth much increase unto the kings whom thou hast set over us because of our, our sins. So the kings were taking the natural resources from our land, just like they do in Africa to this day. Steal the natural resources. But watch this. Here's the point. Also, they have dominion over our bodies and over our cattle at their pleasure, and we are in great distress. Let me read that again. Also, they have dominion over our bodies and our cattle at their pleasure, and we are in great distress. That's a harsh reality because you black men, black women, Latin men, Latin women, you like to think that you are free. None of us are free. This is the land of our captivity. You Latinos, you thought you were free. You see America is, uh, owns Puerto Rico so much that you're being forced to leave your native land and come up to the Americas over here. Just like our brothers and sisters in Africa. Okay, The white man is ruling the earth. And they have power over our bodies. They have dominion, or as you're seeing in these protests, you're seeing that they have dominion over us. Okay, but this is a this is a punishment for our breaking of God's commandments, our sins, and we have to accept that harsh reality. Humble down to the Word of God and just obey what the Scriptures say. And that's the problem with a lot of you. You don't want to do what the Bible says. Okay, you don't want to do what the Bible says. I'm going to go to Luke 13. Because you see this death and turmoil all around us, from COVID-19 to brutality. And it's not just police brutality. You got, think about police, police brutality. A lot of times there's some white people calling the police on you. I'm going to tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life. Please tell them whatever you like. Excuse me. I'm sorry, I'm in the ramble, and there is a man, African American, he has a bicycle helmet. He is recording me and threatening me and my dog. There is an African American man, I am in Central Park. He is recording me and threatening myself and my dog. <laughs> and my I'm sorry, I can't hear you either. I'm being threatened by a man in the ramble. Please send the cops immediately. I'm in Central Park in the ramble. I don't know. Thank you. On your brother, on your sister. Somebody got to call them. So it's not just the police. I want you to understand, it's not just the police. Watch this. Luke chapter 13. I'm going to start at verse 1. There were, there were present at that season some that told him, some that told Christ, of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. So what happened in verse 1? The disciples that were with Christ told him how Pilate had sent some troops down to slaughter the Israelites who were sacrificing. A lot of you thought Pilate was a good man because he said, I wash my hands of Christ. I find no fault with this man. Pilate was vicious, 
vicious. He sent soldiers to slaughter Israelites who were sacrificing to the one true God. Let's read it again. They were present at that season, some that told him of the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. And Jesus answering said unto them, Suppose ye that these Galileans were sinners above all Galileans because they suffered such things? I tell you nay. The word name is no, meaning I tell you no. But except you repent, ye shall all likewise perish. You see that? So the thought was that God allowed, here's the thought that they had, the disciples had. Did God allow Pilate to send soldiers to kill those Israelites that were merely sacrificing because they were sinful, because they were so wicked? Christ said, no, they weren't the most wicked Israelites. He said, but I'll say this to you, except you repent, you shall perish the same exact way at the hands of soldiers, at the hands of police brutality, at the hands of some white man or white woman calling the powers that be on you. That's what Christ said. So repentance is the key. And that's something that's unheard of in the black community. Or you hear black women and black men in church, a few black men, black feminine men in church, and most of you black women in church talk about, I've repented. God bless you. You're going to church on Sunday. Hallelujah. Alhamdulillah. Salah Listen, that's not repentance. That's you parakeeting some foolishness that you heard some dumb pastor say. Repentance is changing your life as Israelites and keeping God's commandments. That's right, I said it. Changing your life as an Israelite and keeping God's commandments. You've never heard that before, but I'm here to tell you, I am here to warn you. Okay, next is our brother. There was a video I saw with, see, I'm a celebrities, you love them and hate them at the same time. And what I mean by that is this. The way the media puts these celebrities, it's like, I'm going to tell you, during the time of Rome, they used to put the black athletes up in the Colosseums like gods. If they could win the tournaments and all that, they were set up as gods. It's the same thing with these black entertainers and athletes. They are looked at as gods because they're, and they are always shown in a good and positive light because they have owners, they have handlers who dictate and tell them what to say as not to offend their um, supporters or offend their people that finance them. That's right, I said it, not to offend the people that finance them or those that support them and buy their music, watch their games. So they are, un, un, they are unable and forbidden to say the truth or reality as things are. So they always go out front, they're put out in the front to say some kind-hearted American splendor. Uh, God bless America. That's in essence what they're saying and what they're doing. <laughs> Let me show you what I mean by that. If you're white, black, brown, or anything in between, I'm sure you feel hopeless by the racism going on in America right now. No more senseless killings of human beings. No more seeing people of color as less than human. We can no longer look away. George is all of our family in humanity. He's our family because he's a fellow American. And as you see there and heard there, that is Beyonce. She says we're broken and disgusted and we can't normalize this type of pain. And then as you heard, she calls for no more senseless killings of human beings, specifically people of color. She then challenges the justice system and asks fans to sign the change.org petition that demands more charges be brought on to all those involved in the death of George Floyd. Now, you heard what Beyonce said, but what Beyonce said, and prior to her, you, there was Jamie Foxx, there was Killer Mike and T.I. None of what any of these celebrities say is Bible-based. Everything they say is based upon the white establishment, based on the goals and agendas of white supremacy. That's the problem. That's what Isaiah uh, 30 and 12 tells us, how we like to stay in oppression and perverseness. We stay in that. We don't want to repent and step outside of that. Um, what I'm going to do right now, I'm going to show you a brief clip of a video we did on our IUIC Watch and Read channel, and it involved the, the dream 
or who was or it was Nebuchadnezzar's dream and Daniel explains the vision in Daniel the second chapter because the king could not remember it. So the king of Babylon, as you all know, well, some of you don't know, but the ancient Babylonians were the modern day Cushites, which are the Ethiopians, the Hamite Ethiopians, not the Shemite Ethiopians. I know you're, not, you're confused what I just said there. When I say Shemite, I'm referring to Israelite Ethiopians, not them. I'm referring to the Hamite Ethiopians, okay? You got to read the Bible. You got to study. Um, he had a dream of, and Daniel interpreted it, and it talked about the world kingdoms, the Gentile kingdoms, uh, beginning with Babylon, which was the head of gold, followed by Persia Media, which was the silver. The brass was uh, the Greece, Greeks, and uh, followed by the legs of iron, which was Rome. And the last empire was America and the European Union. I'm gonna show you the video, just pay close attention. Then I'm gonna focus on one crucial point regarding this last kingdom on earth. Thou, O king, sawest, and behold, a great image. This great image, whose brightness was excellent, stood before thee, and the form thereof was terrible. This image's head was of fine gold, his breast and his arms of silver, his belly and his thighs of brass, his legs of iron, his feet part of iron and part of clay. Thou sawest till that a stone was cut out without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were of iron and clay, and break them to pieces. This was the iron, the clay, the brass. Then was the iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold broken to pieces together and become like the shaft of the summer threshing floors. And the wind carried them away, that no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation thereof before the king. Thou, O king, art a king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given thee a kingdom, power, and strength, and glory. And wheresoever the children of men dwell, the beast of the field and the fowls of the heaven hath he given into thine hand, and hath made thee ruler over them all. Thou art this head of gold. And after thee shall arise another kingdom inferior to thee. And another third kingdom of brass, which shall bear rule over all the earth. And the fourth kingdom shall be strong as iron, for as much as iron breaketh in pieces and subdueth all things, and as iron that breaketh all these shall it break in pieces and bruise. And whereas thou sawest the feet and toes, part of potter's clay and part of iron, the kingdom shall be divided but there shall be in it of the strength of the iron. For as much as thou sawest the iron mixed with miry clay, and as the toes of the feet were part of iron and part of clay, so the kingdom shall be partly strong and partly broken. And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men, but they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. And in the days of these kings shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom.
which shall never be destroyed, and the kingdom shall not be left to other people, but it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, and it shall stand forever. For as much as thou sowest that the stone was cut out of the mountain without hands, and that it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, and the gold, the great God hath made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation thereof sure. All right, you saw it, you saw it for yourself. Now I want to highlight Daniel 2, verse 43, where Daniel says, And whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. This is why in America, first and foremost, you have all nations here. Europe got it to a smaller extent, but mainly here in America. That's what it means. Uh, and whereas thou sawest iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mingle themselves with the seed of men. Here's the point. But they shall not cleave one to another, even as iron is not mixed with clay. So irregardless of what these celebrities, these black celebrities say, irregardless of what they say, God's plan is going to go down. He says they shall not cleave one to another. That's why um, Trump pointed out, President, your, your President Trump pointed out you have left-wing white groups uh, called Antifa who are hijacking black protests, black and brown protests, taking them over. The memory of George Floyd is being dishonored by rioters, looters, and anarchists. The violence and vandalism is being led by Antifa and other radical left-wing groups who are terrorizing the innocent, destroying jobs, hurting businesses, and burning down buildings. Okay, and they're the ones uh, instituting or pushing the violence for their own agenda. It's not that they love you, black man and black woman, you foolish people, you. Oh, look, they love us, you simple asshole. You ain't learned nothing in over 500 years. Let's take a look. Protesters once again gathered in the vicinity of the White House, kept a distance away by layers of police and secret service officers, invoking the name of the man whose death has sparked these nationwide protests. The president chose to assign responsibility for the violence that broke out in the past 24 hours, singling out the predominantly left-wing anti-fascist movement known as Antifa. The United States, he tweeted, will be designated Antifa as a terrorist organization. There were some isolated incidents of unrest, particularly in Philadelphia, where a building was set alight and arrests were made. As the demonstrations continued into the night, there were once again outbreaks of violence in various cities. Flames flickering a few blocks away from the White House in what police described as renewed vandalism. Further marring what had been a day of largely peaceful protest. Mike Hanna, Al Jazeera, Washington. So did y'all see that? I'm glad the, they are some decent and good black women. She had the she had the strength, the testicular fortitude to get take the brick from the black man, give it back to the white people in the car who were giving out bricks for black people to do and commit crime. You can't make this stuff up. Now watch the next clip, and I believe the white man gives the black man some money to burn things down. I paid him to do it. Just pay close attention. Go get everything you can find. 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 Go get everything you
the boys right here. This is the team. There's more stuff that we can put out here. Hey, there's three picnic tables up here. There's a couple picnic tables up here. Let's go on. Come on, y'all. We're building barricades. Go get everything you can find. Go get everything you can find. These are the boys right here. This is the team. There's more stuff that we can put out here. Hey, there's three picnic tables up here. There's a couple picnic tables up here. Let's go on. Come on, all right, all right. Let's get to the shout out letters first and foremost. Okay, I got, uh, I got, uh, I'm looking here. This is all the same sister. It's totals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight pages. I'm not reading. I told you, sisters, write a brief thing. Fine. Brothers, make a brief. Well, I ain't got to say it to brothers. So we said, I'm not going to sit here and read eight pages and I got all these letters. Now, I've read it on my own. but I, So I'll just read one of Valerie's because uh, I'll read. No, that's, that's still too long. Uh, I'll read this one. Sorry, Valerie. I told you I'll keep it short. Else I, it's not getting read. Shalom, Bishop. Most high in Christ. Blessed. Please give this to a deserving young man in the truth who recently graduated from high school and who was unable to attend his graduation. I know in Babylon, it's a great milestone achieved, but to achieve a milestone while staying diligent in being an example and an Israelite, future prophet is a great, greater achievement. All praises, Valerie. So let me know which brothers or sisters, brother, you said, did you say brother and sisters? I always, I'm so used to saying that. Uh, please give this to a deserving young man. Okay. So let me know which young man has graduated recently college or in college, and definitely I'll make sure he gets it. All right. This is from Brother E. See, this is our brother. Bro, see, brother? Nice and short. Thank you, brothers. Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel. Well, praise to the Most High. God, just a shout out to you and all the fellowship. And all the fellowship. Keep bringing the truth. Stay safe, Brother E. All praises. Thank you, Brother E. Thank you for keeping it nice and short. <laughs> All praises. All right. This one is from Karen. Dear brothers, there's a video of ants linking together to form a raft to survive a flood. This is my small link to you. Prayers to you and the entire IUIC family. Sincere and best wishes, Karen A.M. Thank you, Karen. See, why can't more sisters write like Karen? Brief, to the point, precise, all praises. Thank you so much, Karen. Uh, this one, I got a nice little card here, all praises. This is from Julius H. Julius H. Shalom, Bishop, Most High Christ bless you and your family. I greet you in the spirit of exhortation and thanksgiving. I sincerely thank the Most High for men like you, who, as the spiritual fathers, continue to lead the flock with great works. Most High continue, continuously places hedge of protection around you and bless you physically, mentally, and spiritually. Thank you for that one. Please accept these arms to do with as seemeth best. I leave you with 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 58. Be blessed, Julius H. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. I just, I don't, my mind ain't what it was when I was 25. Let me go back and look at it. Now, some of these young brothers might know what it says off the top, off the top, but I don't. 1 Corinthians fifteen fifty eight. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. All praises. Thank you, Julius. Thank you so, so much. Uh, I got a teal hand me a tissue. <laughs> no, something got mine. All praises. Thank you, Julius. Um, this one is from Teresa B. Teresa B. Hello, Bishop. Of the, a donation to help wake up our people. All praises. Keep up the good work, Teresa B. All praises. Thank you, Teresa. Now, she kept it nice and short, too. You sisters are really starting to amaze me. All praises. This is from Sister Catherine. You see how nice and short that one is? Not eight pages. Shalom, leadership, most high Christ bless you all. You know I'm joking. Praying for safe travels to all that are on the Lord's missions. Pray for my family. Yes, Sister Catherine. All praises. Thank you so much. This is from, let me look. It's folded. 
I got to unfold it. Oh, oh, this is from Mary the Jersey Jew. Mary the Jersey Jew, haven't heard from you in a long while. Shalom, Bishop and leadership. Mary here, I send my loyal, faithful donation. Uh, keep up the... Keep up the... I think that says good work at the end. I'm not sure. Uh, another one from Mary. J. Cabrera. Shalom, most high in Christ. Bless. Here I send my support to my family. Let it be used to help the poor of our people. I send my love and blessings from me to you. Shalom. Uh, J. Cabrera, a.k.a. A.k.a. I can't see that next one. But anyway, I know this is you, Mary. I think this is you. Let me look at the handwriting. Very similar. Now, in your left, she writes very, very large. So it's not like, you know, who is this one from? This is from Jose. Uh, thank you, Bishop, for showing my husband and I home. Most high in Christ. Bless. Shalom. Jose. And I can't make out the last name. Let me put it up close right there. Jose. And I can't see that one. All praises. You're so, so welcome. I'm glad the Lord was able to use, my, uh, use me to reach out to you. All right. This is from uh, Patrick. Patrick F. Shalom, Bishop Nathaniel. Let me show it up here. I'm an older brother. Nope. No, wrong, wrong. I'm a older lion or a guy who was born and raised in Detroit, Michigan. Soon to be 59 years younger on May 27th. Oh, oh, praises. Your birthday just passed then. We don't celebrate birthday. Let me just say, because I know somebody will highlight that one part. Lord have mercy, mercy, Matthew 7, verse 7 through 8. Let me read that. Let me read that. Man, I don't know. I, don't, I ain't got everything memorized. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I ain't as sharp as I was when I was younger. Matthew 7, verse 7 and 8 reads, Ask and it shall be given you, seek and you shall find, knock and it shall be opened unto you. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. All praises, all praises, Patrick. All praises. All praises to Yah and Yahweh Shai, IUIC, and the real Jews. Now that my eyes are open, I have been watching your YouTube videos. The Most High has chosen you to wake his people up, and you are the best. Your teaching, which include, well, all praises to the Lord. All praises to the Lord. I don't know about me being the best, but all praises. Reader, narrator of the 12 tribes, migration patterns, artifacts from all over the world, also editors of books. Now that the Bible slash history book is really for the real Israelites, no more churches or the Christianity doctrine for me, which includes lady pastors, Christmas, white Jesus, etc. At the right time for me, I will call for IUIC Bible class. All praise to the Most High, Yahweh Shai, Israel United in Christ, signed Patrick F. All praises, this is his letter right here. All praises. Thank you so much, Patrick. All right. This one is from... Now, I can't even read the handwriting. Shalom. This is for... Oh, this is from Montreal. This is from Montreal. I can't read what he wrote. But all praises. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So now let's get out. Get on to our shout outs. I want to give a uh, shout out to... Ah. Uh, I told you about not putting your name on the, the money orders. <sighs> well, it's a money order from Quick Trip. I don't know who's in it, but thank you. You know who you are. I want to give a shout out. This is uh, Jay Cabrera. Thank you, Jay Cabrera. Jay Cabrera again. Thank you. Brother Dave and Sister Katrina P. All praises. Thank y'all so much. I want to give a shout out to, oh, that was the name, Ileana. Ileana and Jose, because I see it here. Now that's what it looked like, Ileana. Thank you so much, Ileana, again. I want to give a shout out to Sheila K and Jada R. All praises. I want to give a shout out to Charles and Laura L. Charles and Laura L. M. Messiah, M. Messiah, M. Messiah. That's the, I want to give a shout out to Cynthia S. All praises. Lydell M and Karen M. 
Thank you. Uh, Monel S. Monel S. That's from Montreal. Julius H. Thank you, Julius. Uh, Eric M. Thank you, Eric. Uh, Teresa B. Thank you, Teresa. Reginald and Kathleen C. Thank you. Catherine I. Thank you. Valerie H. Thank you. Valerie H. Thank you. And Valerie H. Thank you. Uh, and thank you, Donovan G. Donovan G. And last but not least, Pelalila. Pelalila. I, all praises to the Lord. You know how I say it, Israel. There's no donation that's too small or too great as long as you can afford it and keep yourself stable uh, mentally, spiritually, and financially in these last and trying days. So, Israel, you know how I love to say, stay faithful, stay focused, but most of all, stay in the spirit. Most high in Christ bless you all. Love y'all. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.